Hi, how you doing? Thanks so much for being here. I'm guitar teacher Dwayne Jenkins. In today's video lesson, we're going to look at some techniques that are going to help you with your guitar playing to sound a little bit more like this gentleman right here behind me, Mr. Jimi Hendrix. Let's take a look. So without making this video too long, there was a lot of things that Jimi Hendrix did in his, you know, in his techniques. He was very innovative. He, that's why he's the best, because he was the most innovative for the time, and anybody who's come after him has been influenced by him. Um, so I'm just going to show you a few things that he did for rhythm, a few things he did for lead, and I want you to take some of these things and put them into your playing, and then you'll start to be able to kind of sound like him. Of course, we won't all sound like him, but you understand what I'm saying. Put some of these into your playing, and you'll be able to understand a little bit more of where these people play. So the one thing that he does, as he does, is the F chord shape, okay? And he moves it up. Now, if you don't know your F, it's right here. Fourth string, third fret, second finger is on the third string, second fret, and your index finger is right here on the second and first string, okay? That's your F chord, okay? Now with Jimi Hendrix dude, he would have these big hands, so he'd take his thumb and put it over the top like this, okay? Like that. Move it up the fretboard, okay? And use this kind of as a bass note. I don't have big hands, I have a hard time doing that, but that's what you want to do is something like that, okay? Use that F chord shape, because if you watch him play, that's how he, he kind of, a lot of people nowadays use these bar chords, okay? Bar chords are good, but he used it more like this with that F chord shape. If you take that over, shit, move it up. That's kind of how he plays, okay? Like in, uh, uh, take Purple Haze, for instance. Okay. So when you're moving that F to here, that's F. You moved it to G, then to A. Now you could play Purple Haze like this, too. But you, to play more like him, you want to use that F shape, okay? That's what he does, all right? So that's first thing. Second thing is with using that F shape, okay, he uses his pinky to do chord embellishments like this. Okay? So what I would recommend doing is getting that pinky involved. I see a lot of people not playing with the pinky, okay? Just playing with these three fingers. Get that pinky involved, okay? Because that's really gonna help you out. Get that pinky involved, I'd say that's step two. Get the pinky involved so you can do chord embellishments, okay? A chord embellishment is when you're just adding other notes to the triad. Your triad is your foundation chord. Always remember that, that's the foundation of your chords and then you build it from there, okay? Get that pinky involved, that's number two, okay? And then number three is learn the E7 sharp nine chord, this one here. This is what they call the Jimi Hendrix chord because he used this a lot in his, in his music and a lot of people have used it after him. Okay, so it's kind of like a B7 chord and a B7 chord is like a D7 chord. If you don't know your D7 chord, I'll show you real quick. This is your D, you should be familiar with the D major. It's just kind of inverted. This is, we're just taking it and putting it like this so that this middle note is back here, that's your D7. If we take that D7 and we move it all the way up to the fifth string, so now it's five, four, three, put our pinky on the first string, that's our B7 chord, okay? If we take that B7 chord and we move it all the way up to the third dot, which is our seventh fret, then we take the pinky and we move it to the second string, eighth fret, now we have what's called an E7 sharp nine chord. You want to get that, if you want to play like Jimmy, you got to get that chord right there. That's called the Jimi Hendrix chord. I mean, look how awesome the guy was. He has a chord named after him, right? How many people have that, right? Okay, so like I was saying earlier in Purple Haze, you know. girl put a spell on me okay so that's what he's doing there and then the second then the fourth thing I would mention is octaves okay know your octaves he uses a lot of octaves too especially in that song right there okay 
So octaves are really important. So I would say those four things for playing rhythm. Number one, the F chord shape, moving that up and down the fretboard. Number two, get your pinky involved for doing chord embellishments. Number three, learn the E7 sharp nine chord. And number four, octaves, okay? That, that'll give you a better understanding to where he's coming from rhythmically, okay? Now lead wise playing, you wanna use, what he used a lot was his pentatonic scales, okay? Pentatonic scales, we're just right here in A, for instance. This is the first one. Now there's five of these scales, and I would highly recommend that you learn all five, okay? And I have some of these on my channel, so if you wanna learn these, check them out on my YouTube channel. I have all five of them on there. And they're, what they do is they provide a roadmap for you to move around all over the fretboard. And that's how you see those guys do it. They're moving all over the fretboard because they know those scales really well. They know them in every key and they know how to utilize them everywhere and still sound good in key, okay? So, first one. And what he would do is use that first one and go into, that's the minor. And then this here is the major. And the major is right next to the minor. So he would utilize both of those together. You know, he'd be playing something in the minor and then go up here to the major. And when you learn Jimi Hendrix songs, you'll begin to see this. It's real real clear that he does that. Uh, Steve Ray Vaughan does a lot of that too. A lot of blues players do that. So that's something that you want to do. Make sure you know those two scales really, really well. That first minor one and then the major that's right next to it, okay? Now I'm playing this one in A, but if you were playing, say, in G, your minor would be right here. And your major would be right here. Because the major is gonna start right where the minor one leaves off. Okay, so this would be three, six. This one would be six, eight. Six, eight, five, eight, five, eight, five, seven, six, eight, six, eight. And that's in the key of G minor right there. Or you could be in the key of uh, B flat major, whatever. Okay, anyway, so utilize those, okay? Learn all five of those scales. I would highly recommend it. That's a really good thing that he does a lot, okay? Now, once you learn the scales, then you learn to, need to learn the techniques, okay, that make a lead guitar playing, you know, sound exciting, and that's things like bends. Okay, so we'll just stay in A right here for sake of argument. Okay, bends. That's the first thing you wanna learn. Hammer-ons. Pull-offs, hammer-ons, pull-offs, slides. Uh, you notice he uses that slide technique in uh, Hey Joe, right? Okay, and you also want to do your vibrato. Vibrato is, is I mean, that's your fingerprint on the instrument right there is vibrato. Vibrato is like an, uh, a singer going ah with their voice, okay? You're doing that on your guitar. So if you mix those together, you know, so you can tell right there I'm using hammer-ons, pull-offs, bends. And then when you use like, another thing that he used also is the neck pickup, okay? The neck pickup gives you kind of a kind of a warmer kind of sound. So for playing like blues, some of these, you know. Alright? <clears throat> so that's what I would recommend. And double stops too is another thing. Double stops. We're using like little kind of mini chords, two note chords, okay? And you can find them all over these pentatonic scales. That's why I recommend learn those. And you can slide with them, you can hammer on to them. You can bend with them. Your bends, you got bends. You got bend release where you bend it up first and then bring it down, okay? You can do unison bends where you bend two strings at once. And bends, are, they take some time to get, so work on that, okay? If you work on that, it's gonna make you really sound good with your lead guitar playing, okay? And then the other thing that he used, of course, is pedals, okay? Pedals, he used it like a fuzz pedal for like some distortion. Put a little distortion on there. You also 
also use the wah pedal. A little wah pedal right here. Let me see if I can get the wah pedal working. Alright, so here. So you also use like a Univibe pedal, kind of give you this kind of thing. Okay, so there's all kinds of cool stuff. So those are just some of the basic things that you want to work on. Okay, so there we have it. A few techniques to how to play like Jimi Hendrix. Of course, there's a lot more to that, but this is just some basic insights into how he approached the guitar. That's really what we want to do. We want to learn some about the insights into how these players approach the guitar so that we can take some of those techniques and put them into our own playing. And then that way, when we learn their songs, we have a little bit more insight in how to play them and where they're coming from, okay? So be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, hit the bell for future notifications, all that good stuff. And uh, let me know if you need some help with your guitar playing because I teach guitar lessons offline and on. And I can really help you out with that, okay? So keep practicing. Practice those techniques. Have any questions, let me know. And I'll see you at our next lesson.